Like you mentioned, my name is Andrew Fuliato. So I'm with a company called Just Sell Home. So we do digital marketing for agents. Um, I was actually an agent before up in Aurora. So because of, you know, normally I go to like Vancouver and like, has anyone heard of Aurora? I don't think that's an issue here. <laughs> um, so I sold out there for a couple of years and I built my business online. And then one of the big brands recruited me to train their agents. So I ended up traveling North America, teaching agents how I did what I was doing. Uh, but then every time I did that, agents were like, can we just hire you to do it for us? We don't want to do it ourselves. So started a digital marketing agency that focuses in real estate. So we now run ads any given time between about 50 to 80 agents across North America. So everything we show you is going to be things we're actively doing with agents. And a lot of them are in the GTA. So a lot of these things we know work here. Uh, before you start, just out curiosity, how many of you have run Facebook ads before? And how many does that consist of hitting boost post? Yeah. So the first thing is just stop doing that. <laughs> um, the only advantage of hitting the boost post button is that it's quicker to get an ad up. That's literally the only advantage. Um, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, a lot of it, like you've heard about the whole like Facebook knows a lot about you, privacy, yada, yada, yada. We're basically going to show you how to take advantage of all the stuff that we know about people today. Um, and it's actually really cool some of the things you can do with it. Um, so the most important thing, and I know it's not super clear on the screen, so if you can't read it, we are recording it so you can come back to it. And that's this part specifically, the text is a little bit smaller. Once we go into the ad building, it'll be a little bit bigger. You'll be able to see it all a little bit clearer than it is right now on the screen. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. But to run ads properly, you want to build them through the back end called the Ads Manager. Easiest way to get there, facebook.com slash ads. Or if you're on, so I'm going to pull up Facebook Live to show you so if anything weird shows up in my news feed. I'm just, sorry. <laughs> you never know when you pull someone up live, what's going to show up. That's all right. So you just come up to the little drop down in the top right up here. And then manage ads. If you've never run an ad before, it'll only say create ads. Um, but if you have run one ever, then you just click on manage ads there. And then that brings you in here. So this is where you're going to build. Now, if you've never run an ad, you won't see anything here. This is just this will show you kind of the ads you've run in the past and the different results that they have. There's this all on your business page. Sorry. When you're on your personal, you can get here through here, but you do need a business page to run an ad. Like you can't run an ad without a business page. You do have to have one. Um, with that being said, though, like you don't have to worry about likes on your page. With changes Facebook's made, likes at this point are just 100% of vanity metric. There's like no actual advantage to having likes on your page anymore. Uh, so like we basically will never run a campaign anymore that's designed to get more page likes because they don't matter. Two years ago, there was value to having page likes. Now there's basically zero. Uh, the only like real value is like, sure, it's better to have 200 likes than zero in case someone goes and looks at your page. You don't look like you're real if there's zero likes. Um, but if you have 500 likes or 5,000, you're not getting any better results really than anyone else. Uh, so don't worry about like having this huge number of likes. The way Facebook's changed, it's basically irrelevant. Facebook has changed this recently, so they moved everyone to a new ads manager on that, and they're rolling it out. It's almost complete from what I've heard. So the majority of you should see this exact screen if you log in. On that off chance you're on the old one, the only difference you'll notice is this green button here might be up here. That's literally the only difference. Yeah. Uh, mine says add account. Yeah, so you just got to click on your, you should have like your name over here somewhere. Okay. Just click on that and that'll take you in. So we're going to create an ad. And this first section here is why you don't want to boost the post anymore. So you see here, these are the objectives for your ad. These objectives is how Facebook will optimize it to show it to people. So when you hit boost post, if you don't run it through the back end, what they're doing is they're optimizing it for what we call engagement, which is one of the options here. And what that means is they're going to show it to people who are likely to engage with your ad, which means liking, commenting, or sharing. But for example, if you have a landing page, like you know, here's a home evaluation page, and I want to send people here to fill it out. If someone's liking, commenting, or sharing, that doesn't mean they're going to the page and checking it out. You're not optimizing it for those people who are going to click on it. Like, think of how many people will comment on like an article and you know they never read it. That's the people you're optimizing for when you're hitting boost post. It's those people who are likely to engage. That doesn't mean they're still taking the desired action that you want them to take. By choosing the right thing here, you can say optimize it for the people most likely to do what I want. Because if you think about how a lot of you use Facebook, I bet there's a ton of you who will read everything someone puts out, but you've never engaged with them. 
you've never liked, commented, or anything on any of their statuses, but Facebook knows that you're doing that. So if they're like, you know what, I want people who will actually read this blog post that I did. If you say traffic, send traffic to my blog post, they'll optimize for that large group of people who won't comment, but will go and read it too. Because those people are still valuable because they will reach out eventually. They're just not actively engaged with you right now. So depending on what you want to do, you want to choose the right objective. And we'll go through them. Uh, first, app installs, store visits, catalog sales, you can just ignore them. Don't worry about those three. Um, you'll never need to use them basically ever. And then on the far left here, you see there's brand awareness and reach. We basically don't use those either. There's nothing wrong with using them. Like brand awareness is great, reach is great, but we get better results for similar things using different objectives here. So 99% of the time, we don't touch brand awareness or reach either. The ones we use mostly is what we'll get into now. So traffic, that's just when you want to send people to a specific page somewhere, whether that's you know a listing on your website, a home evaluation page, or a blog post you've written, something like that. Basically, you have a website page somewhere, you want people to visit it, you pick traffic. And they're going to optimize for those people on Facebook they know are likely to go to and actually click on a link that you share as opposed to just commenting and not going to it. Engagement, this is where if you want people to like, comment, and share, you pick engagement. The reason you do it through the back end here instead of hitting boost post is you also get more targeting options when you come in through the back end. So you still want to come in through the back end even if your goal is just to get people to engage. Video views, pretty self-explanatory. You just want people to watch your videos. Um, what's great about this though, and this is also why you should never share a YouTube link on Facebook, you want to upload directly to Facebook, is that you can start retargeting your ads based on people who watch your video. So you could say like, you know, here's a video of a listing I have. Anyone who's watched half of it, let's retarget with an ad to book a showing on that property. Because if they've watched at least half, like two minutes of this video, they're more likely to book a showing. Yep? It's a quick showing. I had an ad recently that was a, I think it was a YouTube link and they rejected it. Um, they don't reject them. It was probably something else in there, um, but and because it could be a bunch of different reasons why they rejected it. But it's more you're just going to get way better results if you upload directly to Facebook. Um, but that kind of like a lot of people had ads as, like ads disapproved lately because they were discriminating against yeah. people. Yeah. I know it's one. It's pretty common. You're not. Um, it's basically this thing where Facebook. So. In the US, they have the fair housing laws, which are a lot stricter than here. So in the US, you can't call a home a family home because that discriminates against non-families. Um, so there's a lot of like things like that. So to protect face, like Facebook to protect themselves, they're making you guys certify that you're complying with local laws. If you've never certified that you've complied with local laws, they'll just assume you're discriminating. So all you have to do is go in one time, and it's just on the main page. I can show you at the end how to get there. And you just say, I certify that I comply. And then you just resubmit your ad. And 99% of the time, it'll go live again. And you only have to do it that once. So if you've ever just, like, had your ad gone for discrimination, don't worry. You're not discriminating. It's just this catch-all by Facebook to protect themselves. Because someone did it in LA where they were advertising an apartment building and basically excluded everyone who wasn't white from seeing the ad. And obviously, people were upset because they found out that they were doing that. Facebook actually was the one who caught the flag for it because they allowed someone to run an ad like that. So now Facebook says, you know what, you have to certify you're complying with all the local rules. That's why they're doing it, is to protect themselves from getting caught up in these like housing discrimination things. Um, so video views though, if you want people to watch your videos, pick this. The three second video view is the number they give you, it's misleading. Um, so like I'll have a video that has like 10,000 views on it but that's for only watching three seconds, but because they autoplay as they scroll down, that number, so what you really want to look at is like the 10 second video view, because that means they actually stuck around and watched a bit of it. That's the number you're going to want to look at a little bit more. But video views is great because again, you can retarget based on people who actually watched it, your next ad. Um, lead generation is a really good one to generate a lot of leads. So like for instance, how many people here have a website that has either never generated them a lead or it's like under 10 ever? That's pretty typical of most people. So what the reason for that is, is most websites are designed by designers, not by people who are ex experts at converting leads. It's graphic designers, artists. They do a great job of making it look good from an aesthetic standpoint, not a good job from actually getting people to opt in. Plus, a lot of the time, there's just actually not a good reason for them to opt in. 
what a lead gen ad does is it eliminates the need for your website to be any good at that. So what happens is when you choose this as the objective, when they click on your ad, instead of going straight to the website, it pops up a form on Facebook that's actually pre-filled in with their contact information. So the name that they've given Facebook, the phone number they've given Facebook, and the email they've given Facebook pre-fills in the form, they just hit submit, then they go to your website. So you've collected the lead before they've gone to check out what's ever on your website. So like when we advertise listings with this, we average between $1 to $5 a lead. So like it's not uncommon that we'll spend 50 bucks on a listing and get 50 leads. Sometimes it's less, it depends on listings. Like we'll say it's anywhere between like 10 to 50 leads a listing. Um, a lot of that just depends on how hot that listing is and little things like that. But it's a really easy way to generate a ton. There's a couple downsides to it. One, because it's kind of like Apple's terms and conditions where you just hit it and don't think about it, you get a lot of people who opt in who even just forgot that they did. So the, it's the lower quality of leads. That, like, in terms of online leads, this is generally speaking the lowest quality you can get, but you're still getting a lot of them, so you just gotta cycle through. Like Online leads in general, you're probably talking a one to 2% conversion rate in your first year is what you should aim for over time, because like what happens with online leads, one to 2% is the industry average for online lead conversion. But that's in year one. Year two, it's another one to 2%, but then you also convert another one to 2% of last year's leads. And so over time, that snowballs. So most like their top end agents do a lot of online leads, they settle in that five to 6% conversion rate range. And that's pretty typical of where you'll eventually get to, but just that first year, one to 2%. So if you get 100 leads, you should only expect one or two deals for those first time you get. So if you're doing a lead generation campaign, and you have not been the uh, landing page. Yeah. Uh, do you even need that if Facebook nope. already provides it? Mm -hmm. Nope. You don't need it because like, it's just redundant because then they have to opt in again. So maybe you get your web page and then uh, lead generation, uh, you know, this ad campaign is your web page for you. Yeah, so that's what we do with a lot of our clients. So like, there's a lot of sites, you know those ones where it's like, the second you try to view a property, it locks you out. And the, or like you can view three properties and it locks you out. This negates the need to have that on your site because this will collect the lead for you before anyone even gets there. Um, so like we even have clients, cause like what you can also do is not have it redirect anywhere. You could collect leads without them ever even going to a website. So like we have clients who like move brokerages for example and like we had one client, he was with Century 21 actually moved to a Royal Page office and the Century 21, you know, they provide those like really bad websites. They we're doing it and it was like, hey, all of a sudden, we don't have a website, but we're gonna, like, it's like a month until we get a new one up. So we just did a lead ad that didn't redirect there and they just collected the lead off Facebook while they were waiting for a new website to get up. So they were, they had plenty of time to get leads without actually having to worry about it. So do you find it better to, like, I, I don't know if you know if Agent Locator can turn that off, yeah, I but I have an Agent Locator, but is it better to do it that way than to have it go to my website and then them have to so there's to my website? Or? Kind of a plus or minus. So if you're running these, you don't, like a lead gen ad, you don't want that on mm -hmm. because then they have to register twice and you're just annoying them. Yeah. But this is the kind of where you got to make the decision is then the Google lead organic traffic you're getting, they're not going to register. So because like with Agent Locator, the benefit of them is they're so cheap, is that I would just set up two sites. I basically look the exact same. And then one's use it for that, the other use it for Google. Um, there's not really, like, what, you, what we're kind of waiting for is that site that can tell based on the source of the traffic to turn it on or off. That's so that Zapier there. can't do that. Right, not yet. Um, now, the other downside of, oh, so one great thing about this, it's usually the right phone number. Because um, most people keep their phone number correct with Facebook. Emails hit and miss though, because, and this depends on age. So we find is under 35, it's 50-50 if you're getting the right email address. The reason for that is like, even like for me, for example, I signed up for Facebook like 12 or 13 years ago. Back then you could only sign up with your university specific email address because Facebook was only allowed for people in university. You could only be friends with people in your own university, so they track by email address. The other side of that, a lot of people signed up in high school and their email was like beachbabe22 at hotmail.com. Well, they grew up and became an adult. They got a new email address. Doesn't mean they updated Facebook. So that kind of under 35 group, they have like their high school email addresses in there. The kind of over 35, generally they've had the same email address for a long time. That's normally correct. So you'll find email address more than phone number is wrong. 
but you normally get the right phone number and it's usually the cell phone number, which is great. This yeah. is probably a pretty basic question, but what does a lead look like and how does it come to you from that? So that's another downside of these. It doesn't tell you when you get a lead, you have to go and get it. Where do you so go? you have to go into the back end of your Facebook page and download a CSV file of your leads. So we use two tools. Um, you can either use Zapier, if you know what that is, or does anyone here use Zapier? So if you're already using Zapier, just keep using it and it'll actually connect into the back end of your page, pull the lead out and send it to you or directly into your CRM, depending on which CRM you have. The one we prefer to Zapier is called Leadsbridge. So Leadsbridge does the same thing. It basically creates a bridge between Facebook and your email or Facebook and your CRM and will send the lead to you automatically but you need a third party service that's gonna connect it so it sends it to you automatically. Otherwise, you just have to go to your page a couple times a day and just download all your leads, which is kind of a pain. And wait, sorry, where do you do that? Yeah, how do you do that? So if you go to your Facebook page, how do you spell Zapier? Pardon? The first one that you mentioned. Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. All right, so if you go, you're on your page, like here, so you come up with the publishing tools. And then you just come down to lead ad forms. And then these will be your forms. And then you just come here and download your leads. So publishing tools and then? Lead ad forms on the side. So why why do you like that other one? What was the one called? Leadsbridge. So Leadsbridge. there's not a huge difference between Zapier and Leadsbridge. It's just I find Leadsbridge is a little bit more user friendly to actually set up and run. And you have a little bit more flexibility. And how much is the cost on that? They're both around 200 a year, oh. roughly. Um, but like if you're going to do these, it's worth it for that speed, yeah. Sorry, where did you go on the side there? You go to publishing tools, tools and then, then lead ad forms. Oh, lead here. ad forms. Yeah. yeah, so you just got to scroll down a bit and it pulls up this. Yeah. And this is all on everybody's Facebook page? On the back end of your page, yeah. Yeah, we'll show you. So, so we're actually like right now we're going through all these. We're actually going to build one. So I'll like show you how exactly how I build ads, and then after we'll show you a couple of live ones that are running now that are getting leads. Can you get to Sorry. Yeah, I'll get into that when we get to that section of the ads manager. Yeah, there's a question right there. Yeah, I think you may be covering it because the question is, I know a number of people who are using this project, and they're telling tools to toss numbers for Facebook advertising, like thousands of dollars. So I'm just wondering. You're yeah. Tell us basically, you know, yeah, it's just like there a certain number where you're wasting your money, and is there if you're spending that's... more, like if you've spent 25 bucks and you haven't gotten a lead, then just stop. Like, it's that low of a price to get leads. Like, what off a listing, we get a lead for every one to five dollars we spend for buyer leads not on a listing, it's generally between seven to twelve dollars for seller leads, it's between like nine and fifteen usually. So sometimes like with new campaigns, it takes a little bit longer to get to that benchmark because one of the great things about Facebook is it learns. The more you run ads, the more it learns what the ideal lead is for you and that'll eventually bring your cost per lead down. So depending on what you're doing, things change. Like we, had a, we have a client out in Belleville right now, we're getting $3, three to $5 per seller lead. Like if you set up a good campaign, it can work. It just takes time to get there. Um, but we'll get all to like those sections too. So that's a lead gen ad. Like they're really effective for quantity. Like lead, if we want quantity of leads, lead gen's what we do. Um, there's one under here called messages. We don't use it that often. What it does is when someone clicks on your ad, instead of going to a site or popping up a form, it opens up a message with your business page. So you just start talking to them right away. The cost per lead is almost the same as mess or a lead generation ads but you don't get their email, you don't get their phone number. That's why we don't use them. For paying the same from a cost per lead standpoint, you might as well get their email and their phone number because why keep them just on Facebook? Like, You don't want to keep people on Facebook because you never know, Facebook could change terms tomorrow and all of a sudden there's a $100 a month fee just to access it. Maybe, or they just can't, like, I know an agent got kicked off for a month because of stuff he was posting. If you lose access, you've lost these things you've kept on Facebook and then your ultimate goal is to get these people in person or you're wasting your time, you need to get their name and email and phone number generally before you end up meeting them in person. So add, using these, it just adds another barrier in that process. Uh, so we don't use these most of the time. 
Uh, we prefer lead gen. And then the last one here, which is what we use most of the time, but it's a little bit more advanced, is a conversion ad. So how many people here know what the Facebook pixel is? One, two, so basically, if anyone's ever gone shopping on like Amazon, you looked at like a shirt, gone to Facebook and seen an ad for that shirt, that's the Facebook pixel at work. So all they're doing is a little piece of code you put on your site, and you just, what it does is it tracks anyone who comes to your website, and when they go back to Facebook, you can run an ad to them. So if someone checks out one of your listings, when they go back to Facebook, they'll see an ad for that listing exactly, or listings in a similar price point. You can set that all up with the Facebook pixel, and what a conversion ad does is, if you think of like a home eval landing page, someone like enters their address, it puts their contact information in. When they go to the thank you page, what a conversion ad does is it says, oh, they've converted into a lead because they got to this page. The only way to get here is to become a seller lead. So Facebook is tracking that. And after about 50 people go in, Facebook's like, they're going to take those 50 people, analyze their profiles, and then go find more people like them. That's where like that kind of invasion of privacy thing that everyone talks about is happening, is they're analyzing all your profiles and saying, who's more people like them that we can run ads to? And it's a really great way, because now you don't have to worry that much about targeting, because Facebook's going to take care of that for you. They're going to look at what people are doing, find more people like them, and run ads to them. It can drop your cost per lead quite a bit once Facebook's done that learning. And you'll see sometimes you're building an ad, and it'll even say, like, learning complete, learning ongoing learning active or whatever they change the term to every day is there once they figure it out you're dro like we had one client drop from seven dollars a lead to 350 because facebook learned what an ideal seller lead was for them and we went from there but because you got to set up the pixel set up like a couple other little things it's a little bit more of an advanced thing so i wouldn't start there i would start with traffic or lead gen get comfortable on the platform once you're comfortable then start going up to here because it's a little bit more complicated to set up, but it, like once it is running, it's 90% of our ads for lead gen. Unless it's a listing, we do it through there. Facebook.com slash ads. No, but from your website. From your website, you can't. It's your website. No, ads sorry, not my website, my Facebook page. The top right, the little drop down arrow, click on it, and then you just go down to manage ads. Thank you. So we're gonna build just like a traffic one as the example today. So, when you come in, this is where you're actually building the ad. So, first thing just on the right side here, you'll see this thing, estimated daily results. And it'll be like, based on your current budget, this is how many people you reach, this is how many people you can click on your ad, ignore it. That is accurate for like e commerce. So, if you're selling shirts and purses and things like that, these numbers are accurate. For any local based business, like real estate agents, mortgage brokers, insurance, anything like that, we found that these numbers are never that accurate. So don't worry about them. What you want to pay attention to is this, which is your audience size. So this is how many people, based on the current targeting you've chosen, will see your ad. So we just, oh, just to get here, it was, we are on this page. Mm -hmm. We just click traffic, which is the type oh, of objective okay. we want to do. And then we just scroll down to continue, which takes you here. So the default is just anyone in Canada over the age of 18. Obviously, that's not who we want to target. So for instance, we could just say <coughs> Richmond Hill, and then it's going to default to 25 mile radius, and obviously not always where you're going to work, especially if it's a seller ad. So we just switch current city only. Right now, now it's only running this to Richmond Hill right now. But you could go a little bit wider. So you could also say, I want to do a radius of, like just go to the minimum 10 miles this way. So you do it that, but what happens here is there's a lot of people in this area who don't actually live here. People coming in for work, people driving through on the highway, different things like that. So what you can do is above here, it says everyone in this location, you just switch it to people who live here. Now it's only gonna go to people who actually live in this area. Yeah. Can you put more than one city? Or you can put as many as you want. Area? You have no limit on the amount of areas you can put in. So like for instance, we had a client who does military relocations for base warden. We put a pin on every military base in Canada. So if you step foot on a military base anywhere in Canada, you'd see her at for relocating to Borden. So there's no limit. So to how, how, do you, how do you put more in? You just click on So that. yeah, you literally just come in here and you can even do like addresses. So you can come in and be like, what's the address here? 
you can do that. Um, and then you could also go like, okay, I also want to go my old office. So you'd be like both of those. So like for instance, you could be like, hey, I say I was targeting agents. I'm just like, hey, here are two real estate offices. I'm just going to target one mile. So one mile is like the smallest you can do. I'm just going to target one mile around the real estate offices and target them with my ads. Now it's only going to their offices. So anytime they go to work, we're targeting them with ads. You do the same thing with listings. So for instance, you got a pain in the butt seller who's like, I'm not seeing ads for my listing. Just target their house. Now every time they log on to Facebook, they're going to look like your ads are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they're just at their house. So now if you know their age, like if you know they're like 40s, bring up the age to between like 40, 45. Anyone between 40 and 45 or one mile of their house, you're going to see ads for their property. Wow. You know their work address? Type in their work address too. Now anytime they're around, they're seeing ads for their listing. <laughs> Another great use of that, if you have a listing appointment coming up. You know, spend 50 bucks to give yourself a better chance of getting the listing. So if I know I have a listing appointment four days from now, I'm going to type in the address of that listing and blast their house with ads for my services and other listings that I have for that week leading up to the listing appointment. Now, they're going to, I'm going to go in and talk about doing Facebook ads. They've just been seeing them for a week too. Because like if someone's using City Blast, for example, they can go in and say they use Facebook, but they're not really doing Facebook because um, it actually has no value. Whereas you're actually doing like targeted ads that have value. So that's where you can do it with those things. So like the seller one's fun because it's an easy way to appease someone. But the listing appointment, we have clients who win the listing because of that. Because like one will advertise houses so like they can see examples of us doing it. And then the other great one, get video testimonials from your clients and blast their house with testimonials of your clients talking about how great you are. Especially if it's their neighbors. Like you sold the neighbor's house, show them that with Facebook ads a week leading up and it's super cheap. Like the minimum budget is five bucks a day. And if you do a one mile radius for five bucks a day, you basically guarantee if they say it, sign on, they're gonna see your ads. So I have a question, because when I try to like have a narrow target, Facebook hasn't been letting me do that. Cause I try to target like actually for 500 houses. And for yeah. some reason, I don't know how, how it so is, some, I can't do it. So basically there is a, the Facebook, it's a changing target, oh. but there is a minimum number of people that can be in an area so sometimes you have to widen it or just you basically just keep going a little bit wider until you get enough people in so yeah you might end up wider than the 500 you might have some overlap but don't worry about the overlap um i'd rather target like a thousand people and 500 are extra than 20,000 and 90,500 are extra so just keep going just a little bit more until you get it yeah, in the right I'm one thinking, I, don't, I don't have an example yeah. right now but if they're like making me do like 20,000 or 25,000 people yeah like i think so the official number is like a thousand roughly. Like once you go under a thousand, it'll say like less than a thousand, it won't give you an actual number. But some and they keep changing. So it used to be a hundred people had to be in like well actually originally only had one. Like I used to literally could set up an ad to run to one person. I used to mess with my buddy that way. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> um he had a really weird ad showing up on his feed. Um but then it was twenty people, so you could run an ad to twenty people. Then it was a hundred, and then it was five hundred, then it was back to a hundred, then it was down to fifty. I don't know where that exact number is right now because they keep changing it based on like feedback they're getting. Roughly speaking, it's about a hundred people, um, but I would say assume it's probably closer to a thousand to like get consistent results. But even a thousand people at the minimum budget, you basically guarantee they're going to see your ad if they log on during that time. Um, because the other side was like potential reach. It's a thousand people, but those thousand people aren't on Facebook every single day. So as long as they log on to Facebook, they'll probably see it. Um, you can also target by postal codes. Not as effective like up here, for instance, like in Aurora, the entire town is one postal code. You might as well just type in Aurora. Um, but for instance, you could what you could do, for example, is okay, so I got Aurora, but I actually don't want anyone at my office to see it or in that little area. Now I've just excluded that pin. So I could be like, run to the entire town except that one area. So if you guys are familiar with Newmarket, I used to exclude the dog patch from my ads. Um, anyone from Newmarket? No. <laughs> Some people get it. Um, but if there's a part you don't want to run ads to, you can exclude it specifically this way. Um, oh, yeah. well, can this connect the same way to Instagram somehow so you're getting the younger demographic? You're actually automatically, when you build it through here, running an Instagram ad too. Right. I'll show you where your ads are placed in the next section. Okay. Um, but yeah, by default, if you build through the back end, you're actually automatically running an Instagram ad too. Okay. Yeah. To the same same criteria. Yeah, everything you've picked here, because Facebook just owns Instagram, right. so they just push it over. Okay. You don't even need an Instagram account. 
So it works out well. Um, so you can do a lot of different things here with targeting. Uh, I'm going to just bring the targeting up a little bit higher so when we're doing some of the other stuff you can see. Okay, so age. Don't overthink it. We normally just go about two years over where that like minimum line is. So like if people start buying at say 26, we start our ads at 28 and up because we want to eliminate the majority of people who aren't buying. Most people now can't afford this area 26, 27. That's when they kind of start. So we just go 28, eliminate most of the young people. We go there. Sellers, they need time to be in their house. So we go 30 up normally. Sometimes we go a little bit higher, but normally it's just 28 or 30 up. So if this is a seller ad, I'd probably go 30. Um, sometimes we go 32, 33, depends on the audience size, but you don't want to go too low with this. Like, you know, people are like, oh, I want to include more people. There's more people in that range who might be doing it, but it's better to exclude 90% of people who wouldn't than to keep that tag because you're going to have a more effective ad. Um, between gender with men and women, we just leave both on. Um, the only time I would change it, there's a couple of scenarios. One, if you just like, if you're a guy and you only can connect with guys, you suck with women, then only run it to women, men. And same the other way. Like if you are only good at converting, like you find, you know, I've talked to a thousand people and I've only been able to convert men. I've only been able to convert women. Then sure, do it that way. Um, otherwise, you'll find. I'll get to question in a second. Suspicious spot. So you find about 60% of your leads will be women, but the cost per lead's about the same. So there's not really an advantage or disadvantage. The only other time we do is like we had a client who only worked with divorced women over 40. So for her, obviously we're only targeting women. Um, but you can, I would just leave it on all. Do you have a question? Uh, age up over the next. Do you have one usually to do it or no? We normally just leave it um, unless there's like a specific, like if we're doing like targeting families looking to move up to a bigger home, then sure, we're going to narrow it down. Um, but for the most part, we just leave it. Because okay. as long as they're on Facebook at that age, they're probably of sound mind and able to make that decision. Um, so we just leave that and go. Um, so men and women, again, for the most part, we just leave it, expect 60% women, but the same cost per lead. Languages, you could put in English, for example, just to make sure everyone speaks English, but we found that doesn't actually change the results at all. Where this works well is, is if you speak another language. So if you speak like Italian or Russian or anything like that, put that in and then run an ad in that language to that group, and you'll find that you can get a really good result because now you're speaking to them in their own language. Yeah. Would you put both English and the other language or just I would just put the other specific. language. Okay. So, but now there is a downside is not a lot of people, like take Italian, for example, because I did a test of it one time. If you type in Italian here in like the Toronto area, it shows only like 16,000 people. There's more than that just in Bonn who speak Italian. So it's not always accurate, but at least you're getting like those hardcore, like you know they speak Italian to run the ad to them. If you really want to target people, I'll get to that in the next section of like, there's another way to target like a specific group, like a community group. Um, so we don't generally do a lot of language based ones, but I feel like for the one that we found most effective for would be like Punjabi, different ones like that, where like they're definitely listing a specific language. Um, but there's even better ways to target, but that's one. But for us, most of the time, we just leave that blank. Um, here's where you get into like, kind of like the really cool targeting stuff. Uh, first, though, a lot of people do, don't target people interested in real estate. That's you guys and mortgage brokers. <laughs> like, that's not who you want to run an ad to. So, because, like, Facebook is just basically, like, your activity online, that's what they figure out. And it's mostly you guys and the mortgage brokers who are interested in it. So it's not an effective one. The other side of that is those generic terms, Facebook's not that good with. So, for instance, I see ads for tennis fairly regularly, and I don't care about tennis. I read an article about Serena Williams winning Wimbledon when she was pregnant. I thought it was really cool and a good story, so I read it. Now they think I like tennis, so I see ads for tennis. I, it's relevant. Those generic interests, don't use them. So like, if I'm targeting like a home on a golf course, I know a golfer is going to buy it. I'm not going to target golf as an interest. I'm going to look at what interests do a golfer have that nobody else has. So I'm going to look at things like I'm not going to pick Tiger Woods because he's mainstream. Everyone in this room knows who Tiger Woods is. So you can't pick him, but like Jordan Spieth, Bubba Watson, if you're into golf, you know who they are. If you're not into golf, those names mean nothing to you. Or you look at like Titleist, TaylorMade, things that are specific to that group. That same logic is how we exclude other agents from seeing our ads. Because I don't want my ads going out to the competition, mainly because I know you guys click and opt into your competition's ads all the time. Because I see your names coming across my client's lead list 
pretty regular. So if you want to exclude agents, you click on exclude people here, and you just think about what do and it, what's an interest that agents have that nobody else would have. So a great one, Real Estate Council of Ontario. If you're not an agent, you do not care about the Real Estate Council of Ontario. So you're going to go in here, type it in, and now anyone who likes the Real Estate Council of Ontario will not see your ad. Added bonus, Rico doesn't see your ads. <laughs> you didn't hear it from me. Um, so you can do things like, but think about like what do agents like? So like Inman News, it's an online publication just for real estate agents. So you can pick that. Uh, Tom Ferry, pick the big coaches, Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini. Buffini actually has two randomly. Um, then you can do like companies that service real estate, like real estate webmasters. Dot loop. You don't want to pick like DocuSign though, because that's not real estate specific. So you guys use it a lot, but if you exclude DocuSign, you're also excluding all the business people who also use it in theirs. So it has to be real estate specific or whatever like industry you're targeting has to be specific to that. So we type in these things? Okay. Yeah, once you do this once, so there's a save button underneath. What does that do then? So what this does right here, this excludes real estate agents from seeing your ad. Oh, okay. <laughs> the reason you don't want to go by like employer is I can guarantee if I went to all your business pages, at most like three of you list Royal Page your community as your employer. You guys all list your own business page as your employer. And you can't target individual agents' business pages that way. So it's not going to be effective as a way to exclude people. And then if you go by job title, even though it's supposed to only be sales rep or broker, I bet you almost all of you have a different title. It's like CEO, team leader, dream maker, agent, realtor, like all these different things. It's not as effective either. Whereas this, it's kind of because it's a catch all, it works pretty well to get rid of them. Um, you're not going to ever get rid of all agents though. Yeah. Uh, targeting behavior, do you ever know that or no? Not really, no. Just always interest? Uh, no, so the interest we generally just do to get rid of agents. Um, for like sellers, for example, we actually you don't want to, this is where a lot of people screw up, is they overcomplicate it. So for the most part, we just go relationship status and age. Because like I know, for example, like up here in the suburbs, not a lot of single people are buying and selling homes. So I'm either going to include married people in a, or those in a relationship are engaged, or I'm just going to exclude single people. And there's not really a huge difference in the two because... You can either come in here and just exclude anyone who's single or go up here and include anyone who's married, for example. But the downside of each is that, for example, I'm married. I don't list it on my Facebook because my wife's a federal parole officer. We don't want her, like the murderers, to go to her, like my profile, which is pretty public, and see the link to hers. So that our teachers, for example, never list that stuff because they don't want their students finding their family. So there's a lot of married people who don't list it. So what we do a lot of the time is just come in and exclude single people. That way, anyone who like openly identifies as single, they just won't see your ads. And that way it's more likely to go out to the married, engaged in a relationship. It's a really small group, but a great one to target, engage people over 40, two homes to sell and one to buy often. <laughs> so it's a great demo, but it's a really small one. Um, but great group to target because they're generally moving. Um, so we normally just go relationship status. So you like coming here, you just type in exclude single people, single as a relationship status, and we just lost 20,000 single people from seeing this ad. Odds are those aren't the people we're targeting anyways, but you don't want to overcomplicate it too much more than that. Um, now, if you're going like downtown Toronto, you, you might have to a little bit more because it's such a large area. Because like you could target like one mile and get 200,000 people in the city core. Up here, like 260,000, you're okay. Um, you don't want to go too much more in depth. Now, if you do have to, you want to use that same idea of what's the interest that people you're targeting would have that no one else would have. So the other idea is like, who else is targeting the group that I'm going after? So if you're thinking like, I want to hit homeowners, who else advertises a lot to homeowners? Don't think about like things like what real estate companies, like don't think of like Remax and Keller Williams. Think of what other big companies like Home Depot. Home Depot doesn't care about tenants because tenants don't spend money on their house. They care about homeowners. So target Home Depot and let them spend all their money finding homeowners. Now you just target them. Or think of like appliance companies like Maytag. Find those companies that target homeowners, piggyback off their ad spend. 
So it's just about knowing who your audience is. Yep. I know we're coming out of a lot of questions. I heard there's a way of, of uh, targeting who can do just like Realtor.ca. No. No? No. Facebook, or Realtor.ca won't let you put a Facebook pixel on the website. So, like, you could do, like, people in the County Real Estate Association, things like that. Um, it's not going to work that well. We've tested them. Um, we use the Canadian Real Estate Association as an exclusion because it's more likely to be agents interested in it. But no, there's no specific way to target those who want to realtor.ca. I have tried. <laughs> yeah. So on targeting, you would put Home Depot? And yeah, if we need to get our number down a bit for budgeting, which I'll get into the next one, okay. you just put Home Depot in. But it's not as like, it's more if you want to just get like really specific. Um, you can just go, okay, anyone interested in Home Depot? <clears throat> but you can see here, it's only 15,000 people. I mean, there's a lot more homeowners than that. Um, so, and that's why I think people overcomplicate it. Then they start adding in other ones to get that audience size up. Generally, the more interest you include, the higher your cost per lead is going to be. Um, so we like to keep it pretty simple. Relationship status, age, geographic, and then exclude agents. So what do you put in the targeting? Just nothing? A lot of the time we leave it blank. Oh. Unless we're targeting a niche. So like we have a client, for example, who's in the past has targeted entrepreneurs. He's, that's his like niche, that's what he wants to do. We want to work with entrepreneurs. So we'd look at, okay, who else targets entrepreneurs? Like Gary Vaynerchuk. We're going to put Gary Vaynerchuk's name into here, and now we know anyone who follows him, probably an entrepreneur. Tony Robbins, different ones like that. So like, if you're trying to think of interests like that, you basically look at the three Fs. So who do they follow? Because someone who follows Gary Vaynerchuk, a lot different than someone who follows Kim Kardashian. Right, very different audiences, but if each of them, if you want to target one or the other, you would just pick that person and run an ad. Also, if you ever want to like run a Toronto Star ad, don't just pick Toronto Star as the targeting. Now you pay way cheaper rates and you're targeting the same audience. So now, when anyone goes and reads Toronto Star, you can just run an ad to them anyways. It's just not on the Toronto Star. So, super cheap way to get newspaper ads, or at least out to their audience. Um, so, you can do the same with like the Global Mail, but so it's who do they follow? That's one. Who influences them? Tony Robbins, Gary Vee, all those different people. The next step is fun. So where do they spend their money? People who drink Starbucks, a lot different than people who drink Tim Hortons and Second Cup, like target based on things like that. Um, and then the other one is where do they frequent? So where do they spend most of their time? Are they reading the Globe and Mail or are they reading Sports Illustrated? Are they reading ESPN or, you know, Vogue, right? Like very different people. If you know where they are, you can just piggyback off these other companies' big audiences. So you can basically get ads out on top of those groups without ever having to actually pay that group. Like if you were to pay Gary Vee for an endorsement, that costs you like 150 grand minimum. You can do it here for 10 bucks. Like it's so much cheaper. Gary who? Gary Vaynerchuk. He's a big social media guy. You also need like a bleeping thing. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> it works. Um, okay, so that's interest targeting. So again, for the most part, I say don't overcomplicate it. Yep. Uh, retargeting. Uh, yeah. Do you do that? Yes. Yeah, so, for most of so retargeting is that process where someone's like been to your site or they've engaged with you or watched your video and then you run an ad to them. For the most part, you're not going to have enough volume to retarget for a little while because you got to build up that list. Um, the quickest way to begin is if you have a big database, you can actually upload your database to Facebook and then run an ad to your database. Because if you think about like email, it's got like a 20% open rate on average. Well, you can find 60% of your database pretty easily on Facebook by uploading their email address. Now you just run it out to them. And then you can also tell Facebook, analyze my database, find more people like them. And now run it out to people who are similar to those in your database already. So there's a lot so of cool that's things. doing like targeted ads to yeah. specific people? Yeah, so you can just upload, you can just upload email addresses to Facebook. On target, on target. Um, so it's, I'll show you after how to get there. But basically, there's a place where you can upload a CSV file, and they'll take all the email addresses and match them to Facebook accounts. They won't tell you that, like, they'll just say, like, you uploaded 1,000, and we found 800. Um, so they'll let you do that small an ad? Something. Or, something. So it depends on, like, so if you upload 1,000, it depends on how many people are there. Like, we've had clients, we've uploaded 10,000 names and emails and phone numbers, and it found 5,000. We've also done the same, and we found 100. It depends on like the quality of your database, how accurate it is. Did you type in their email address correctly in your database? Like that's a surprisingly large one of just spelling mistakes. Um, but yeah, like generally speaking, you'll be okay with about a thousand. But how far below that, it's 
hit and miss. So yeah, sometimes you just add a few other names and then go. <laughs> or build a lookalike audience, which I can show you how to do if we have time, and run into the lookalike audience. So, so sorry, does it link to your personal page and it can direct to all of your personal page members? No. So it won't let you pull your personal. So there is a way to scrape all the names, emails, and phone numbers off personal. But it's against Facebook Terms of Service, and they find out they'll ban your ad account, so it's not worth doing. Oh. Uh, people do it all the time. Like, but then can you download your personal people's email and then You import? can, but again, if you do it, it's a violation. So like, the, according to Facebook, to upload a database, you need their permission to market to them the same as you would like with an email list. So we normally just say use your email list and upload it. Because if you do it, you're risking your account. Um, yeah. Export from Outlook, all the, all the contact information, yep. markets, those people. Yeah. Okay. Nice and easy. It's easy. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Once you see the process, it's actually super easy to set up. Um, once you've done all this work, you can actually just click on save this audience. And then next time you go to build an ad, you just select that audience. You don't have to go through this process of building it again. So I'd say like if you've got an open house, there's no one there, spend like your time and build like two or three audiences. And then just every time you build an ad after that, just select that group and run from there. You don't have to keep redoing it every time. So the other cool thing about Facebook is your ads actually don't just run on Facebook. There's actually a lot of places that they run, so I'll show you where they are. Um, first here is you can choose everywhere or phones only or desktop computers only. Never use desktop only ever. We do like all devices. We almost never touch this, but like we, there is this thing online where you can like there's studies where it's like people convert at a higher rate on desktop than they do on phones. It's basically a misleading stat. The reason for it is most websites, especially like five years ago when these studies were done, were terrible on phones. They weren't mobile friendly, they looked like crap. So of course a desktop's gonna convert at a higher rate. When you're doing like a good website from a mobile phone, they're gonna convert pretty similarly, but 95% of Facebook traffic is from a phone. Literally, like 95% of users will not log into Facebook on anything but their phone. So if you choose desktop only, you've immediately lost 95% of Facebook traffic so why are you running the ad? So we don't do that at all. We keep it on all, because uh, like the desktop viewer is so small. Um, so in terms of the different ways your ad will be show, the first one here is newsfeed. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a little post that says sponsored when you're scrolling through your newsfeed. We always leave this on, and with the odd like anecdotal exception on a campaign here and there, this will always be your best performing place to put an ad. Without fail, every time the best one. Then there's instant articles. So this is a mobile only. So if you think about, I don't know if you guys pay attention when you're on Facebook on your phone, some articles have like a little lightning bolt in the bottom left corner. And when you click on it, it just slides across the screen instead of going to a website and loading. That's because like the Toronto Star, for example, preloads their articles to Facebook. So if you click, it just slides, there's no load time. So it's a lot quicker. But because most phones are so fast now, it's pretty instant anyways. Um, but all an instant article ad is, is in the middle of that article that you're reading, there'll be a banner ad in the middle, and they just have to scroll by to keep reading the article. But if you think about, for example, like, when was the last time you were on a website and clicked on a banner? Almost never. So from a lead generation standpoint, you're not going to get much out of them. From a branding one, it's great, because it makes you look like you're everywhere. And for instance, like the Toronto Star thing I was talking about, it'll make you look like you're advertising in the Toronto Star and it's only costing you five bucks instead of whatever like that $500 they charge is. So a really easy way to get your ad from a branding standpoint in front of people. Lead gen standpoint, you're not gonna get much. In stream videos, we don't use because we kind of have this rule that if our ad, the first time <laughs> someone sees our company, if it annoys them, we don't wanna do that. An in stream video is just super annoying. Uh, basically what it is, you're watching your two minute dog video on Facebook, 30 seconds in, it stops and says, watch this ad to keep going. That's an in-stream video ad. It annoys everybody who sees them, so don't do them. Um, right column, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You can leave it on, it's not gonna hurt. All it is, is on a desktop only, so you're already talking about 5% of the traffic at most. It's gonna show a little ad right here on the right side in the column. So few people are gonna see that. Most, a lot of people who use desktop nowadays anyways have ad blockers on, so they might not even see it at all. And again, it's such a small percentage of users. It's not gonna hurt your campaign to leave it on, but you're not gonna expect really results from the right column ad. Suggested videos, 
Um, that's like if these are actually fine. Like you're doing video ads, these are fine to leave on. All it is is like someone watches a video, and then once they finish, it automatically goes to the next one. Like one scrolls up on the screen, that could be your video. Those are fine to leave on. People end up like watching like two hours of videos sometimes that way without realizing it. Like they watch one funny video, then one scrolls up, they watch another, another scrolls up, and they just keep going. It's called going down the rabbit hole. It happens all the time. Um, this next one here, marketplace, brand new. Like literally I noticed it for the first time like three days ago. <laughs> um, but basically Facebook has a marketplace where you can go online and buy and sell and things like that. It's here, it's available to you. Um, but I don't have stats on how well it works. It's like three days old to run ads to. So I'll get back to you guys with the results as we use them and look. But basically Facebook has a marketplace, you can run ads in it. Um, but I can't tell you effectiveness one way or the other right now because we haven't we don't have enough data yet. So I will let you know when we have data, but it is a new place you can run ads to. Uh, and then there's this is Instagram. So when you run an ad through this way, you're automatically running the ad on Instagram too. So first is on the Instagram news feed. So as people are scrolling down, you'll just have a post that looks like a regular post on Instagram. They work great from a branding standpoint, similar to like instant articles. They don't work great from a lead gen perspective. Because if you think about like how many people have an Instagram account? If you think about how you use Instagram versus Facebook, like Facebook, you click on articles, you leave it all the time, you go read them. Instagram, you never click on links and leave Instagram, basically. Like that's not how people are used to using the platform. So it's the same when they see an ad. They'll look at it, they might heart it, they might comment on it, but the odds of them clicking through and becoming a lead are really small. So we don't do these from a lead gen perspective usually. It's more of a branding thing, but it's actually great for branding. Um, also, Instagram right now is like the number one platform online for selling luxury goods. There's a lot of people with money use Instagram over Facebook. So if you're targeting the luxury market, you'd be surprised Instagram is actually a great place to target luxury. Um, Instagram stories is relatively new. Um, and from an ad placement perspective, so one of the things with Facebook ads Whenever they launch like a new feature, it usually sucks at the beginning. And then over time, as they figure it out and learn, it improves. So like when Facebook story or Instagram story ads first came out, we tested them and they were crap. Um, but what we've noticed lately is the numbers are starting to go up. So it's trending to that way where they can do really well. Um, there's some marketers who absolutely swear by them, but those are marketers targeting other digital marketers who are generally more tech savvy than most. So it's a little bit of a different, but that's an early indicator that the general public, this is gonna be a really good one coming up soon. But based on the way that they're done, because it's like a full screen vertical on your phone, you'd wanna build it just for the story to be effective. You don't wanna like take a newsfeed ad and just plug it into a story ad. So if you're gonna do a story ad, build it just for the Instagram story. But the way it's trending, there's actually a lot of potential there. Uh, because a lot of people do it, there's not a lot of competition, that's good. Um, so this is one to pay attention to, uh, but right now it's not quite as effective as like Facebook newsfeed, for example, uh, but six months from now it might be. Then audience network. So for the most part, we just like to turn these off. Um, this is back to that idea. We don't want to annoy those who see our ads. So an audience network, like anyone here like play a game like Candy Crush and then there's like a pop-up that comes up on screen. You got to like click the X to get out to get back to your game. If you miss that X and you click on the ad, that's an audience network ad. So like guys like me with a fat finger click on like half the ads because they just missed the X. And now it looks like I got this really cool cost per click, but it's all these people who have never intention of clicking on the ad. They just missed the X and it annoys you. So that's what these ones are. It's just like ads in random apps. So like if you run your ads on like Tinder or something like that, like you can do audience network ads and they're gonna show up on Tinder. Um, in-stream video, similar idea. It just pops up in the middle and says, if you want to keep playing the game, watch this video. Super annoying, people don't like it. Rewarded videos though, that's one that's actually sometimes worth putting on. Because it's actually this thing where, like if you didn't know, a lot of those monies make a ridiculous amount. Like those games make a ridiculous amount of money. Like there's one called Game of War for like a two year period, it's making about five million a day. Like I know a lawyer in Winnipeg who was spending 70 grand a year on the app. Like people spend big money in apps. Rewarded videos basically says, if you don't want to spend money, we'll give you in-game money for watching an ad from one of our sponsors. So they watch your full ad, and at the end, they get a reward. 
So from a branding perspective, it's great because it forces them to watch your entire ad and then they get a bonus at the end. They're probably not going to become a lead though because they want to go spend that money they just earned. They don't want to go and fill out your home evaluation site. So great from a branding standpoint, not necessarily great from a lead gen one, but out of the audience network, that's probably the only one I would actually use. Um, and then there's messenger ads. Um, so the first one is home. As, like, as you're scrolling through Facebook Messenger and you see all your contacts, they'll basically throw a banner ad between a bunch of your contacts. It's a banner ad, people aren't clicking on them. So it's great, like it's good from a branding standpoint of hey, you're everywhere. Um, but from that perspective of I want leads, you're not gonna get much out of it. Uh, sponsored messages, you can basically just ignore. Um, so for instance, like who here on their business page gets more than like one or two messages a week? Anyone? So sponsored messages is you can pay to send a message to everyone who's messaged your page. At the volume you guys are getting, it's not worth it. Like just go talk to them like a human and send them a message yourself. It's gonna have a way better response instead of some <laughs> generic blast out to everybody. Um, like for instance, like I managed a page for an agent who had, I think it was at the time 12,000 likes. He got about 15 messages a week. 10 of them were photographers and mortgage brokers. So they actually got about like five real messages a week and most of them were crap anyways. But even at five messages a week, just respond to them and talk to them like a person instead of just paying to send a message out. This is more for like Starbucks who gets a thousand a day. They can just <coughs> pay and send a message out like, here's a coupon code for everyone who's messaged us. Like that's what that's for. It's not for like what we're doing. Uh, so don't worry at all about sponsored messages. All right, then, um, you can hear, like, to only go to Android users, only go to Apple users, unless you're one of those people who just hates anyone who uses the other platform. I wouldn't worry about it. Just leave it on all mobile devices. Doesn't matter what phone someone has. Um, there's also one here, only when connected to Wi-Fi. I wouldn't worry about that unless your your video ads like half an hour long, because then they have to use data, and people aren't going to watch half an hour of a real estate ad on their data plan. It's a waste for them, but on their Wi-Fi, sure. Um, so if you have like a really long video, then do only when connected to Wi-Fi. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Um, this section here, I wouldn't worry too much about either. It's for excluding like certain contents. Like if you're running an ad, you're like, I don't want my ad to show up on dating apps. I don't want it to show up on this platform. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, Facebook controls their network pretty tight anyways, because they don't want people to feel bad with any of their ads. So they're pretty tight about not letting your ads show up on bad platforms. Whereas like where this matters is more like Google ads, because Google basically you're at anywhere but porn. So like Google, sure, like we had a client who was very, very left wing and his ads were showing up on like Breitbart and sites like that. He really wasn't happy about that. So we like excluded Breitbart and those even further right wing sites from seeing his ads. But with the exception of things like that, um, like Facebook doesn't let those things happen. So for the most part, we just ignore this, but it's more important on Google to control who, who and where your ads show up. And then budgeting, so everyone's favorite topic. So the rough rule of thumb for choosing the budget is $10 a day per 100,000 people in your audience. That's for a lead gen ad that you wanna go, like have a go on going. Because if you do say like, so 250,000, $25 a day is like the perfect budget. It doesn't mean you have to spend $25 a day. You can go under or you, and you can also try to like bring that number down. What you really don't want to do is go over that. So if like my audience size is 100,000, don't do $25 a day. Because what's going to happen is you're going to exhaust that audience too fast and it's going to get your ad really stale and you're going to have to really soon change it up and make a lot of changes. Where like if you have 100,000 audience and you do $10 a day, it's going to keep it running for a pretty long time and get you pretty consistent results without burning out your audience too fast. So normally that's the best rule of thumb for letting it go for a while. So let's say we target an uh, email list all of, like uploaded from Google, yeah. like all, all of our friends and family. Uh, with that, how much do you... The minimum budget's five bucks a day, so that would be enough. Spend five bucks... But it also month. depends on your campaign. Like if you want to just do like permanently run to them, then you just pick five bucks a day. If you're like, it's a short two week campaign, you don't really have to worry about budget then at that point. Like you can blow it out because it's a short run and exhausting them in like a one week period is not a big deal. Um, 
I'm just trying to understand this exhausting because wouldn't it be they're just going to hit everybody all at once and so it'll yield the same results so, it, because if you stretch it out then it's just not hitting that many people in that time period. So the $10 per 100,000 is that where we find out that sweet spot for they see it enough because we're most able to see an ad two or three times to take action. So that $10 a day per 100,000 is enough for them to see it a few times. But like if you, someone starts seeing it 8, 9, 10, 11 times, then they actually get really annoyed. Oh. And then they start like hiding your ad. And the more they start doing things like that, it starts downgrading you and costing you more. So that 10 per 100 is kind of that sweet spot of they're going to see it enough to take action, but you're not overdoing it. Oh, okay. yeah, so, so it's not that it's targeting all different people. It's that the same people will see it. Yeah. Okay. So that's where we found the number. Now, if you're like advertising a listing and it's like one week only, don't worry about like overdoing that number because it's a one week run. You're, the odds of you annoying them that quickly is pretty small. Um, it's more if you want it to be like an ongoing lead gen thing. Um, but like if a listing, you're like, you know, I'm gonna spend 200 bucks over a week and it's, you know, 50,000 audience, whatever. Don't worry about it. Um, but it's only a week. So that long term ad is the one where you want to really pay attention to that. Um, you can also do a lifetime budget, so you can choose either daily or lifetime. So you like, you know, I want to spend 350 bucks from like May 14th to May 21st, or you can just switch the daily budget and say, just spend 10 bucks a day until I tell you to stop. It's up to you which one you do. For lead gen, we just generally do daily budget and we just let it run, and then we just turn it off when we start seeing the results change and we go and do a new one. Um, listings will generally do lifetime budget though, because it's like, you know, we want this to run for a week. We're going to spend 50 bucks, let it run for the week. Um, one thing to note, if you switch this to 50, go back to daily budget and then realize you'd rather do lifetime and you come back, it's not going to go back to the $50 you had. It goes back to the default 350. Um, it used to be 500 and that's how a client of ours accidentally spent 500 on open house ad. Because he went in and made some changes, and he thought it would go back to his default. It didn't. Went back to the default of 500. It was a 24-hour ad for 500 bucks in Brantford. I mean, great exposure for his open house, but. Did a lot of people show up. <laughs> no, <laughs> but a lot of people saw it. Great. So, like, from like the vanity standpoint of showing numbers to his seller, it looked great, but not the best use of his 500. Um, the other, the only other advantage of the lifetime budget is that you can do what's called day parting. Um, so you can come down here and choose what time of the day and days of the week you want your ad to run. We personally don't do this. We like to run our ads 24 seven because like they're shift workers, people are up and down at different hours. We like to run our ads at different times. Um, the argument for it is if you want to make sure you're available to answer your leads when they come in, only have your ads running when you're available. So you could be like, you know, Monday I'm available nine to nine. So we're going to run a nine to nine. Tuesdays, my kids play soccer, so I'm going to stop at 6. Then I have hockey Wednesday night, so I'm going to stop at 6.30. Then I'm hungover Thursday, so I'm going to start till noon. Then I'm going to work Friday and Saturday, and then I'm taking Sunday off. Like, you could do that and be like, now it's only going to run when I'm available. Um, we generally find just better to run at 24-7. Uh, that's in our experience. But if you want to be available to answer and make sure leads only come in when you're around, that's something you could do. But we generally just do run continuously, like 10 bucks, five bucks a day. Again, the minimum budget's five. So no matter what you do, you have to spend at least five bucks a day. Um, so if your audience is 40,000, you're still spending five. All right. So if this is where, like if you have like 10 different pages, most of you probably only have like one, um, this is where you would do it. Uh, I gotta find my five not. Sure enough. Sometimes Facebook might do a little glitch and not pull up my page. I'll just go randomly pick one. Let's go with, yeah, sure, here's a client or running specials around. Okay, if you have an Instagram account, you can click it here. You can just add it in. If you don't have an Instagram account, it will just take your business page and run an ad as like a shadow account as if it was your business page. The only downside, you can't respond to comments because you don't have an Instagram account. Um, but they'll hide the comments anyway, so no one will really see them unless they click through. Not a big deal. Um, but if you don't have an Instagram account, they'll just run it from your page. If you do have one, you can connect it here. But then you have to switch your Instagram account to a business account. That's the only difference. Um, now, from the type of ads, it's still trying to load, but 
these are the different types of like creative side of the ad you can do. So there's carousel ads. So because it's not loading, it's hard to see. Um, it just looks like it's being slow right now. <coughs> but they say carousel ads, like little cards, you've probably seen them. And like they have to scroll through the cards and they can see there'll be like three, four, five of them. We generally don't use them. Um, one, they do get a low cost per click, but it's slightly artificially low because as people are scrolling, they sometimes accidentally click and they go through. Those are not the type of clicks you want. Because one of the things Facebook measures is when someone clicks on your ad, how long do they spend where you sent them? Because And if someone accidentally clicked, they're going to leave right away. That They're going to go, oh, your ad's not as relevant. We're not going to show it to as many people, and we're going to charge you more money to not show it to as many people. So it's not the type of click you want. Um, so the only times we generally do carousel is one, if you've like killed it in a neighborhood and you got like four just sold, we'll put all four, like each card is its own just sold and we'll run it to that neighborhood as a branding play. Same if you have like four just listed in an area, we'll do it that way. Um, the only other time we generally do it is if you have a really nice panoramic shot. If you try and squish a panoramic into like a single image ad, it looks distorted and off. But with a carousel, you can cut it up, you can cut the panoramic up on each card, and as people are scrolling through, it's like they're scrolling across your panoramic. It looks really cool when you do it properly. Um, if you do that, there's a little button you have to turn off that dynamically reorders the cards based on what's getting the lowest cost per click. And if it's a panoramic shot and someone's clicking the third image the most, they're going to move that third image to the beginning. It cuts up your panoramic, screws the whole thing up. Um, we had someone come to us asking why their ad was screwed up because they had an image of their team all jumping in the air, except they left on the dynamic reordering, and all of a sudden the first picture after a day of running the ad was someone cut in half to start the ad, and then the rest of the team after that. It's because they just turned it on, and the third card just clicked the most, so they moved the third card to the beginning. So if you're going to do that, make sure you turn that off. Um, but generally, we just don't do carousel ads. Um, collection ads here at the end. I wouldn't worry about them. Every time we've tested them so far, it hasn't been worth the extra effort to set them up. Um, the results just haven't been as good. So those we don't use. We'll test them again in like six months and see, but as of right now, we haven't found them to be worth it. Slideshow, similarly, they work well, but <laughs> fun anecdote, we used to use slideshows for listings to get leads. We were averaging about four to $7 a lead when we did slideshows. Then for like a week, slideshows broke. So we just couldn't use them. So we had to start using single images. We got down to one to five dollars a lead. So these still work. We just get better results with single images. So now we basically exclusively use single image or video for most of our ads. Um, from a lead gen standpoint with a listing, for example, you will actually get more leads off a single image than you will a video. But the branding of a video is huge. Impression. Uh, what I've heard, video content has a lower cost per click. Yes, but I don't care about cost per click, I care about leads. So for lead generation campaigns, so what? Yeah. Branding campaigns, video. So if you have the budget, what we'd recommend if you have like a listing video, run a video to like the neighbors, because then you're going to show them, hey, look at the type of marketing I do for your neighbors. You should hire me to do it for you too. And then do a second ad with single image to a wider area to attract buyers. So we would do two. We do the branding ad to the neighbors to show the quality of our work with a video, and then wider range image collect buyer leads that way. Um, but again, we're talking like one to five a lead here, like four to ten here. So it's not like it's a huge difference, but one to five versus four to ten is a pretty big range. Uh, so you'll still get leads. You're just not going to get as many. Um, but it's there. So for the most part, we use single image. So here. They're going to want you to put in the website you're signing. This is a traffic ad. The worst thing you can do for an ad, and I see this mistake all the time, is send them to the homepage of your website. If you're sending someone to the homepage of your website, you're just throwing your money away. Like we had a client in Vaughn come to us, and he was just like, he, had, he hadn't hired us yet, and he'd like run an ad. He's like, hey, I had 1,200 people click on my ad and not one lead. And he was advertising a listing. So we go look at his ad, he was just sending them to his homepage. Well, then they have to go and click on like the listings tab. Then they got to go to the search tab and find that listing he was talking about. Of course, you're not going to get any leads that way. You want to send them to something directly related to whatever your ad's about. So if it's about a listing, send them directly to that listing page. If it's a home evaluation, send them directly to a home evaluation page. It should always go to exactly what you were just talking about. And even the language should be similar. So if you on like your home eval page says, find out what your home is worth, your ad should say, find out what your home is worth. But if your landing page says, get a free home evaluation, your landing page or your ad to get a free home valuation. 
colors, every like the look and feel. It should all be consistent across your ad and your landing page. Because you well, they want to make sure they're not like seeming like a mistake and they clicked on the wrong thing and went to the wrong place. You'll find you'll get a much better result when everything kind of has that same look and feel. So if I was say doing a homey val, I'd go to like just sellholmes.com slash homey val. It's not a real link, so don't go to it, but that's if more of my real estate website, that's what I would do. And that oh I oh I see. Most home vowels are often landing pages. Yes, so this one is a landing page that we're doing right now. So, like we're, so if you're doing a lead generation Facebook uh, campaign, you're auto Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't need the landing page then. Oh okay. okay. Yeah. So for some reason the internet's being really slow right now. So it's not loading. I was gonna try and refresh the page, see if that helps. It's always fun when you're doing a live demo and those things freeze up, eh? Oh, no internet connection. That's what you want to see. All right. Okay, let's try. Did it come out? Oh, it did. <laughs> so that would do it, eh? Maybe it just needs a second to reestablish. Okay, so I should grab my phone. I want to show you kind of how people look at Facebook ads. So if you think of like a Facebook ad, it's like they would have the image, and like you scroll up like this. Well, that, because people scroll so fast, they don't see like the text first. They see the image first. So the image is what gets someone to stop. So like, because people scroll really fast. Like if you didn't know, like the average person with their thumb every day scrolls 300 feet. They're doing this and they, like, they've literally studied it. 300 feet a day with their thumb is the average. Some people are more than that, but that's the average. So what happens is people are scrolling like this, an image gets them to like stop. So they'll be like scrolling, scrolling image. Oh, they look at the image, then they read the headline. Okay, perfect, we got it back. So they look at the image, then the headline, and we'll go back here for a sec. Okay. What is going on here? Oh, recording stopped. Even better. Great. All right. I'll send you. No, I've done other recordings of this. I'll just send you one of those. Okay. You got, a, those, you got the, the email address? Uh, I'll send it to the office and they can. Or actually, I'll show you a way to get it at the end. There's always ways. That's the easy part. All right. So let's go back here quickly. So the first thing that happens when you put in it a uh, link, it's you, you need to uh, oh, reinitiate your screen. Oh, I know what happened here. It's showing the other screen that I have. Just click mirror. Perfect. And that's probably going to be the wrong side. Yep. All right, let's go back here, display. That's better? Okay. That's still true. Okay, so there's, here we go. Do that. Okay, here we go. So when you pull a link in, it's going to automatically from your website randomly pull in. What is going on? There you go. All right. That's weird. Okay. You guys see that now? Yeah. yeah. We're good. All right, so when you type in a link, it's going to randomly pull from your website. Not randomly, if you actually know how it works, but it's going to pull from the metadata and take off your site. So you obviously want to go and change that because this is not what you actually want to show in your ad. But what's going to happen when you run your ad, if you are on Facebook, they're going to see the image first, then they're going to see your headline here, then they're going to come back and read whatever text you put up here. So your image has to be something that gets them to actually stop and look. Houses work great because people love looking at real estate. I mean, there's actually a very popular hashtag called hashtag house porn because people love looking at houses a lot. Um, and there's a lot of different things like that. One of the most effective ways to do it would be like, say you get your house, increase like the contrast, like 20 to 30%. Don't go like 50% because then it starts to look like a cartoon, but that 20 to 30% 20 to contrast editing on the image, will, like make the sky a little bit bluer, the red brick a little bit redder just looks nicer and people are more likely to stop and look. Um, but then the other side of that is one of the other things that work is to make it look like something their friend posted. 
So because what happens, and that's why they stop, they're scrolling fast. So like with a just sold, for example, you'll get better results with a just sold if instead of doing like fancy just sold graphics, you have a picture of the seller in front of the sold sign. Because what happens is as they're scrolling through, they're like, oh, is this someone I know? They stop when they look. Oh, I don't know who they are, but now they've stopped and they're reading your ad. Whereas if it's like the fancy graphics, they can gloss over and keep going because they know it's an ad right away and a lot of people aren't gonna stop. So to make it look like organic, you take a picture of your sellers with a sign. So like the idea would be like, so for instance, I think it was H&M or one of the companies like them. They did a test. They hired professional photographer, professional models, did like this really fancy campaign. And then they just went on Instagram and found people wearing their clothes and said, can we use your pictures in our ad? The random people they found wearing their clothes outperformed the models and professional photographer 10 to 1. Because people stop if they think it's their friend. Whether it is or not, they've at least stopped now. Now they're going to read your ad. So that's the goal of the image, is just to get them to stop and look. So, for instance, like a nice house can work really well. Um, well I'll just, I'm going to pick up a, don't usually use stock images, but just for the exercise today I'm going to. If you do have to use a stock image, we find that this particular stock house performs the best. Um, one thing to note though, if you're going to use this house as your stock image, make sure it looks like it could actually be in your area. Um, when I saw an ad an agent ran in Aurora one time, I know some of you guys know Aurora, it had palm trees in a desert in the background. <laughs> you guys have been there probably, not local. Uh, but you don't have to worry about like, oh, that specific type of tree isn't local to Aurora. That you don't have to worry about. But it has to at least somewhat look like it could be in the area. Desert, not local. Um, so just make it look at least somewhat like it could be in the area. And kind of like what we like to do. So if you're targeting like a homey valley, what you want to do is think of, okay, what's the average home in that area? And your picture of your house should just be like a little bit better. Because everyone thinks their house is a little bit better. So you just go a little better. Or if you're like targeting buyers, if you're saying like, you know what, we're going to target anyone looking for a home under 800,000, pick a home that's 850. Because, But if you pick a home that's like 2 million, they're just going to get mad. Because they're like, there's no way that house is for under eight. But if it's 850, they'd be like, hey, maybe there's a divorce. You never know. I might get lucky. Um, so you put that house that's just a little bit better, but not a lot better. And we find that that gets the much better results. Um, but yeah, so that's what we do with houses. Then your headline here, which is going to show up here, you want to just basically tell them exactly what they're getting. Don't get like super creative. You just tell them what they're getting. So in this case, we'll tell them exactly like the medium. So they're getting a free report. Find out what my home is worth. That's it. We're being super straightforward, super to the point. We're not getting super creative here. We're just going to say, find out what your home is worth. Now what we want to do, so we actually do like, we have about five templates and I'll send you a link so you can get them that we use for running ads. For a home evaluation, we use one called the qualifier because what we want to do is qualify out people who aren't going to be our quality leads. Because what happens with home eval especially is you get a lot of people who have no intention of selling. They're just curious what their home is worth. Maybe they got assessed on the taxes. They want to, you know, find out. They just actually bought a house and they just want to make sure they didn't overpay. So they're just submitting a request. Like things like that happen all the time. So what you want to use your text up here for is to get rid of people. So here it's, they stop and they look at the house. Oh, I do want to find out what my home is worth. Now let's get rid of the people we don't want filling it out. So the first thing we do is we ask a question that gets our ideal lead to say yes to. So our ideal lead is not someone who wants to find out what their home is worth. It's someone who wants to sell. So we'll do like thinking of selling. And here you can either put selling your home or you can throw in some house emoji and the little sale ticket question. This, what we find, you generally don't want to go to like more than like one to four emojis per ad. Generally, unless you're going like the 30 under, then you just throw as many as you want. Um, but generally above that, one to four is your right one. If you're going to use emojis, please know what they mean. <laughs> not all of them are what they seem. An eggplant, not an eggplant. Peach is not a peach. You don't get it. Ask someone who's laughing. Who's <laughs> um, but don't use them if you don't know what they mean. Keep it safe with like hands. Um, so what we do first, ask a question that gets your ideal person to say yes. Then we reiterate what they're getting. So we like, get a free. 
own value report. And here's where we also do is we want to get, again, get rid of people who might waste your time. And some people, like, they'll feel bad about wasting your time. So we'll say, by a local expert. Get a free, and then we also like that in custom sometimes too. Because, like, by adding the words like custom, local expert, now we're saying, like, we're going to take the time and create a custom report for you. It gets rid of those people who are just expecting it to be, like, automated and, like, some random thing that comes out by, like, your assistant because they don't generally care about wasting your assistant's time. But if you're a professional, they often don't like wasting your time. So it's just a little bit of way to get rid of them that way. Then what we do, especially with home value, is people are expecting to click on it and get an instant home value. So now we'll actually just straight up say, this is not an automated valuation. And then we tell them why. Those are often inaccurate and misleading. This is a, again, we say this is a custom made report by a local, by, or you can change the wording a bit and test it once, but like, Someone who is an expert in your area. Um, one thing to note, if you say you or your too much, you'll get dinged. Um, what Facebook has found is people who use it a lot, like every sentence, generally are trying to make people feel bad about themselves. It's like, do you feel bad that you're bad? Or do you feel bad you're in debt? That's the language they've identified. Facebook doesn't like ads and make people feel bad about themselves. So if you use you and your too much, they just shut your ad down. But like three or four times, you'll be fine. Um, but generally, just have that in the back of your head. Don't put you and your too much. Um, Facebook doesn't like it. And then there's a really important part, which increases generally our results by about 15 to 20 percent for every single ad. Is the next line. Click learn more below to order your report. And sometimes we'll put arrows pointing down. That really simple thing there, literally like 15 to 20% sometimes gets more people clicking. Just by telling them, click below. It's like, if you don't tell them, they don't know. So we always add at the last line of one of our ads, something about exactly how to get what they're supposed to do. So an ad like this, slightly lower the lead than if you just wrote like, find out what your home is worth. But the people coming through are generally better types of leads. So we do things, that's why we call this one the qualifiers. We're trying to qualify the people that come through. You're still gonna get time wasters, like you're still gonna get those people who don't read it. So like you'll people who like comment being like, this is BS, I was expecting this to be an automated thing when I typed in my address. But then you just point to the ad and be like, well you didn't read it, it says it's not automated. That happens sometimes. There's nothing you can do about people not reading, it's just the nature of online. But those who read it and go through the whole thing, higher quality lead than the others. Um, but this is just like one, so we actually have five different templates that we use. So if you guys want a copy, you actually just text that. Um, you can see that. So you basically just text the word templates to that phone number. Um, so this morning, the actual, if you guys know tech, the API connection broke between in this service. So just text it, it'll fill out, and I'll have to manually trigger it when I get back. So you're not gonna get an automated email with the templates, but basically it's a series of templates that we use to write all our ads. We have five of them. Uh, so we'll give you like, here's how we structure our listing ads. Here's all the different ones. Um, so it's free, you can just take it and use it, yeah? How do you preview your ad before it goes live? I'll, uh, I'll go back and show you. <laughs> this is actually your preview right here. Oh, so, but if you were doing the one page, the other one, is So you can also different? say like, show me in the different formats how it'll look. Oh. So you just come through here and be like, here's how a marketplace one will look. Yeah, of course. Um, here's how instant article want to look. So I'll just be like in the middle of it. And like you can see, like look how much different that looks than like a regular one. That's why you're not going to get as many leads off something like that. Um, and then for desktop, one other thing you want to notice. Oh, it's not there. But newsfeed link description is a desktop only thing that's going to show up under. We normally don't put much there. We'll just say like it's fast. He's like, so few people will see this, but sometimes it pulls a random word off your site and puts it underneath. Uh, I don't know why it's not showing up right now, um, but that's normally where it goes, is right under here. Um, a couple other. Easy and free? Yeah. We don't overthink that one. Um, display link here, I would just ignore. <laughs> display link, it used to be really valuable um, because you could literally change. So this is your display link here. So like, basically, you're telling them where you're sending them. 
what you used to be able to do was literally put anything there. And the, the whole fake news thing is what kind of killed that. Because I, and this is actually, remember I mentioned before, you could run an ad to like one person. That's how I used to mess with my friend who was an Eagles fan years ago, is I would run ads and say it came from ESPN.com and be like, Donald McNabb died in a car crash. <laughs> oh <my laughs> and God. I just started messing with him like that and be like, cause him a panic. But he thought it was ESPN.com because you could literally change it to ESPN.com. And that's how like the whole Russia thing started messing with Hillary Clinton. And they'd be like, you know, Hillary Clinton murders babies, CNN.com. Like, that's the type of ads they were running, and they were trying to pass them off as legitimate news sources. So Facebook changed, and now you have to run it to the same link you're sending it to. That's why it used to be cool what you could do with this. People abused it, they got rid of it. Um, I don't use it at all now because really what you use it for now is like if you think about like listings on your site, you could do like just the homes.com slash listing slash Aurora slash one two three Main Street, and then it might, it might also be like slash X, Y, Z, one, two, three, eight, exclamation point, hashtag, whatever. Like, it'll just go on forever. What you can do with the display link is cut that down to like just homes.com slash one, two, three, main street, instead of having that really long slug. Um, the reason we don't do that is because what some people do, instead of clicking on the ad, is they just go put that into their browser. But if you cut it down to make it look cleaner, when they go type that into their browser, it's not gonna go to a real page, it's gonna go to a 404 error. So we don't put that in, we just leave it like that. And then that is your ad. Once you're happy with it, you'd click confirm. And then that would actually put your ad live. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to run this ad. Um, but that's how you do it. It'll take, generally, spend the first one up to 24 hours to approve your ad. You, if you do get discriminated because or shut down because they're like, you discriminated. I'll show you how to get rid of that. So you would just, you have to do it from the ads manager on your computer, not your iPad, not your phone. You got to go on your computer. You click on here, come over to this tab on the far right, click it up, and then you click on the edit button here. Click edit, it pops up, and then it'll actually be just right up here. There'll be something that like, has a little thing like you're discriminating, certify compliance. You just click certify compliance once, it'll say thank you for certifying that you're compliant with local regulations. Then for that ad, you just have to make one change to it to resubmit it to review. If you don't make a change, it won't resubmit for review. It'll just stay not approved. So the change that we always make that works every time, we just go to the last word, hit spacebar once, and then hit submit. That spacebar is enough of a change that they'll review your ad again, and it'll get approved almost every single time, unless your ad actually is discriminating. Um, but as long as you certify your component local laws, that'll put it up every single time. Now, are there any questions? Um, do you do you put the pixels on for all the ads or we have well we have it just set so pixels always on every website it is okay and second question um, do you go to what well, when you're setting it up do you go to campaigns or do you go to ad sets and what is the okay. difference so when you're setting up and you're going through that building process that's setting up each of these for you what they are so campaign is just like the name of it like it's nothing really it's just like the default name Ad set is like your targeting, your budget, and where it's being placed. And then the ad is like the creative side, so your image and your text and things oh, okay. like that. Um, the reason they separate them like this, so like I could, for instance, for this home eval, I could say go to the ad set. Let me run one that's targeted to Aurora, one that's targeted to Newmarket, one that's targeted to Richmond Hill. Then I could also come to ads and say, now let's run 10 different versions of the ad and see which one works the best. Oh, I see, okay. So like, we do that with listings. Like, we'll upload, because you can upload six images at a time, and it'll keep the same text, rotate through the images, and then after a couple days, you'll know which one's getting the best cost per lead. Got it, okay. So there's that's yes. why it's set up that way, because you can run all these variations. Um, more important for, like, companies that are spending, like, a 1,000 bucks a day, because they can run so many variations. Real estate, you don't want to do too many, because Generally, people aren't spending more than like 500 to 700 a month on Facebook ads. Um, and of that budget, you don't want to do too many variations because you're just not going to get enough data to know if it's actually working. So I wouldn't do, do more than like two or three variations for most ads. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? We're good? I, have a, I do have yeah. one more. Um, when you're talking about luxury uh, properties and that, right? Yep. And you're also talking about pre-qualifying in the content. My question is, have they gotten rid of like um, household income? Like, to... so that was never in Canada. 
it's always there, but it would save so us the when you set up your account, if they thought like if you there's some settings where like you probably didn't tell them you were in Canada, um, and then they would allow American targeting options to show up. But if you selected it, it did nothing for your ad because they don't have that data available here. But don't they know I'm in Canada? No. Like so it's. Yeah, so like 99% of people would have been fine, but it, you just might have been like one of the few who got caught who they didn't notice and got through and it allowed it. Uh, so like for instance, I had American clients, they thought I was in Canada, so they didn't even let me have the American targeting options. So I had to go through Facebook support to get them to put the American targeting options back in for my American clients. Um, but like income, likely to move, homeowners, all those targeting options, Facebook went and bought that data from a third party company and then inserted it into the platform. Because of all the privacy stuff going on right now, they're getting rid of it because uh, they're concerned about how it looks. So even for the Americans, they're not having it anymore. Um, but even in our test, like go by like excluding or including certain income levels, we didn't find it ever improved results. Um, with our other targeting stuff we talked about today, we actually got better results. Do, do you make do you make reference to like if you make over two hundred thousand a year, or are you just insulting people by doing that? Because I also like get people signing up for. You know, homes that are, let's say, a million dollars, not yeah. even luxury. And then you get people sign up, you call them, you've got a good number, yeah. you've got a good email, you call them. They're like, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm renting and I want another rental. Can you help me? Well, what part yeah. of my ad has anything to do with rentals? Sometimes it's just the nature the of nature online. Of That's why, like, the average, it's even Google for that matter, yeah. too. And the average online lead conversion is 1% to 2% for a reason. Like, that means 98% of leads coming in are not going to close for you. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna come in now. Probably of those, there's probably like 40% of them are actually gonna move in the next couple of years, but you gotta follow up with them a lot. And that's where like the real like once you learn how to generate leads, this is actually the easiest part of online marketing. Like getting leads, once you know how, it's, it's like you can get as many as you want. Like we can get, we have like a client getting 300 a month right now, and she's not even spent like it's for the 500 bucks. Like it's not hard to get a lot of leads if you know how. The hard part is then converting them. Filtering and converting, yeah. Because yeah. the the follow because like especially with online leads and Google's somewhat similar, but it's like the average time is like eight to like sixteen months until they're gonna buy or sell. So you have to follow up with them for that time. Because if you're not following up, they're not gonna convert. So it's a lot of work to do that. So like normally if someone comes to us and is like, you know, my business is ninety seven percent referral, you're probably not gonna like working online leads because it's a lot of following up and a lot of work. But like if you're if you're a cold caller, you're gonna be great with online. Leads because you're used to doing that. Um, it's just giving you people to call, basically. Um, but, yeah. I have a question, Andrew. Going back to creating the uh, uh, on Facebook, you were saying that you know a different language and you, you know, you list that. Yeah. Now, does it automatically translate into that language? No. So you would have to write it in that language. We'd recommend a video. A video of you speaking that language, because that would be more, yeah. That's what I would do, is I would do a video of you speaking it. Um, the other way to do target people language, don't pick language, but think about that group. What would they be into that no one else would be? So for instance, like if I was targeting Indian, I'd be like, what would Indian people be into that no one else would be? We'd look at like Bollywood stars that aren't popular here, which is most of them. Um, like newspapers that are in Punjabi because obviously unless you speak Punjabi you're not going to read that newspaper. Uh, same with like Italian, like if you're targeting Woodbridge, you figure out which newspapers Italians are reading that no one else is, just target fans of that newspaper. Um, that's where we find. So but like similarly, like don't pick like, if I'm targeting Italians, don't pick like Juventus or something like that because a lot of non-Italian speakers follow soccer. But it's finding those things that someone of that group would be into that no one else would be. And the only way to do that is know that group or do a lot of research on it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? I have one. If you um, can so hear me. Paul, I can show you if you want um, how to get your the uh, like upload your database. So we got a, <coughs> like ten more minutes, roughly. Uh, you want to see how to upload your database? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you come here. So we're on your page here. So this three lines up here, the technical term we call that the hamburger. You click on the hamburger, go over to all tools, on the fourth column you're going to see audiences here. This is what you're going to pick. So once you're in audiences, you come to create audience, custom audience, 
and then customer file, which is the first one. And then you just add customers from your own file or copy and paste. And then here you would either upload your CSV file here or select copy and paste here and you can just paste all the email addresses in. Then you give it a name and then you hit next and it's gonna create that database of people who are in your database. So it's a really easy way to target them with an ad. And can you add those and then also market to the general public within the same thing or do you have to create a separate ad for that? Like, do you know what I mean? So yeah, if you select them, then yeah. it's only gonna run an ad to that group. So you right. have to do a separate one that targets the general. Um, so yeah, like normally what we'll do is we'll do like one campaign, two ad sets, one targeting our database, one targeting general public. Then you can also compare results better. Right. What got me better results? And then what you can also do, which is cool, is you then say create lookalike audience, choose your source, and you just find the name. So like for this one, sample CSV, location in Canada. Now what they're gonna do is they're gonna take the database that I uploaded and find the 1% of people in Canada who are the closest to those who are in here and build an audience of them. So you get about 230,000 people who are the most similar to your database. Then when you run an ad, you can narrow it down to an area. So you can be like, yes, this is the 1% most similar in all of Canada. When you run your ad, you'd be like, okay, but I only target the, one, the ones of those in Richmond Hill and doing things like that. This is actually the best way to target investors. You work the investor market, because with targeting, it's really hard to pick targeting that investors would work. But if you have like a database of them, upload the investors here and just say, find me more people like them and they'll go find people similar to people already investing in real estate. That's probably the best way to target investors. So is there a link when you've made this ad that you can copy and paste that ad to your personal page? Uh, yeah, so like when you, I'll just pull up an ad account. All right, let's go ad manager. Okay, now let's go here. So, here we go. At least active right now. Okay, take this one. Okay, so, so take this ad for example. You go to like, as if you're gonna edit it. Which ad? Any ad? Any ad. Yeah, any ad you wanna see. And then you'll see this little button here. You click on that. Facebook post with comments. And then this takes you to Facebook page where the live one is. And then you can just come down and then you choose your personal profile. So liking and commenting as my personal. And then you would like, comment, share as you would. So it's not showing share right now because this one's set not to allow shares, but that's, just, that's how it's set up. Yeah. So oh, if you change the name, does yeah. yeah. the change to your name? Yeah, so like you can share it to your personal that way, or okay. you can share it this way. Yeah. Um, I, it's kind of relevant, but I was just wondering how you can make custom tabs on your Facebook business page. Like um, I know some people have... It's been a while since I've done it, because nobody clicks on them, so I stopped caring about doing it. Um, it's like a little tab that says, like, my yeah. listings. Yeah, I, I used know. to do, like, I can't remember off the top of my head how to do it. Um, literally, I had done it for a few clients and we tested a bunch of different ways and they literally never had anyone never click on them. Because <laughs> people don't go to your Facebook page. Yeah. Like if they see an ad, they'll do it, but they don't click through to your page. Yeah. Like the amount of people that ever look at it are like, it's very small. Um, honestly, I'd have to go back and like play around and remember how to do it. Because okay. like changes since the last time we did it, but yeah, like we've tested that okay. and we've never had it get any results. So I wouldn't worry too much. Don't waste too much time on it. Do you have another question? Can you repeat the upload, how to upload the one you just showed us? So it's just when you come in here mm -hmm. and you just go to your audience section. Okay. And then create audience, create a custom audience, and then you just do customer file. Yeah, any question back there? Uh, a guy I've never really seen. Like, we do lead gen ads for listings, it gets us the most leads. Yeah. It's like it gets way better results. What about your settings? Should it keep on public? Or? For your personal profile? 
I, I, it depends on how no, you want to use personal business, profile. Business. So your business page, everything you do is public. Okay, so, so it's not public. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really have a choice. <laughs> public. Any questions? So you said that you're gonna get we're gonna get this upload from where? So the recording screwed up, but I'll just send you an old recording of something similar. Um, so through the office or through each meeting? No. The office um, will send it to Yeah, I'll send it to the, the office and then also if you want if you add on the end of this, I can include it in the follow-up email that has the template, so I can send it through with that. So you can go back and watch it that way too. So, any more questions? All right. Well, do you guys have any uh, questions? You can always follow up with me, like email or anything like that. Uh, otherwise, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. But the easiest way is to take it this way because I only have so many. So. Or go to justsellhomes.com, but I'll pull up some cards here. And can you tell us? Are you allowed to tell us who your services and what you guys? Yeah, I just because they brought me in. I normally don't sell unless I'm asked about it. I want to know. I'm asking. All right. Yeah. So we have a few different ways. Um, so the first one, which is kind of like an easy way to test this out, is we can just advertise your listings as a, on a one-off basis. That's the only way to like hire us on a non-retainer basis. Uh, so it's 150 bucks a listing. We can generally get anywhere from 10 to 50 leads for that. It depends a lot on the listing itself. Um, so, and then, the, but the first time you do it, there's a $250 setup fee. That's to get access to your page, set up the software that delivers you the leads, doing all that. Uh, so the very first time it'll be 400 bucks, and then every time after that it's just 150. And then we have our other packages. So our most popular is our silver one, which is 750 a month plus the cost of ads. The cost of ads is about 500 a month. So you're looking at about 1,250 investment a month minimum. And then it goes up from there. Like we have some that can go up to like three or four. Um, timing wise, actually, if you want to just do it yourself, tomorrow, assuming my website guy finishes it today, we're launching a course on just how to do this yourself. So we'll have like a, you know 10 hours of videos of us teaching you how to do everything we do ourselves. That tomorrow when we launch it, it'll be about 700 bucks, but that's lifetime access. Um, and then after that, it'll be like a thousand bucks, I think. Um, so if you want to just learn how to do it yourself or get like an assistant to learn how to do it, you can just go through the course and they'll teach you everything that we know. It also comes with a private Facebook group where you can ask us questions. And then it also comes with like a monthly Q&A call where you can jump on a call with us every month with like everyone else in it and just ask any questions you have about Facebook ads. So, yeah, so those are the main ways. So it's either the course, you can do the one-off listings, or sign up for the monthly. Uh, with a monthly, like just to be upfront about it, most of our clients, like when they start, are already making about 250. I think that's kind of our target demographic. Our agents like between like 250 to a million in terms of GCI, and that's why like prices are kind of in line with that because we do a lot of custom work. If you have a lower budget, I'd recommend going with like Agent Locator and getting their like Google Ads because it's it works really well. It's a lot more kind of like cost effective at the early stages. Like I think Facebook ads long term have a way better ROI, but it's a long term play. Google is a little bit more short term. Uh, so if you are like, you know, that 500 a month, 600 a month total budget, I'd look at something like Agent Locator. Um, they do really good work. Um, or just do our like our one off listings. And it doesn't have to be your listing. If you borrow someone's listing in your office, we can advertise that too. Uh, well, that you can get a lot of leads that way too. So does that include the branding, like you, you send? Yeah, so we're full custom. So like literally, you when we start, we just get you to send us your logos and everything like that. And we graphic designers in house. We've got Trisha here in the back who works with me. She is also a graphic designer. So between her and then we have a group on retainer. We do all like that's why we're more expensive. Is like literally everything is custom built. You don't have to do anything. That's why we're called Just Sell Homes. We, you Just Sell Homes will handle everything else. So we give you anybody's one listing in certain area, and I can get the leads. Yeah. As long as you have their permission to advertise it, then we'll advertise it. But we worry about you getting that permission. We don't double check it. Any other questions? No? All right. Well, thanks for coming, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, don't worry.